Okay, so now we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into the construction of this gasket. And broadly speaking, they're very similar. Four aspects. First, fire rings that you see here, all around each of the cylinders. Second, the backbone, which is actually a steel plate which runs all the way through the gasket, and is the shape of the gasket here. Third is the body of the gasket, the black material. And fourth is the silicon beading. We're going to go through each of those, tell you what they do and why they matter. Right, so let's talk first about the fire rings. And the best way to look at this is actually almost, you could, you know, in theory, you could get rid of the rest of the gasket and just have the fire rings. Now, you wouldn't have a great engine, but it'd work. The purpose of the fire rings is to stop hot combustion gases, which are under pressure, from passing from one cylinder to the next. So when, you get, when the spark goes off in this cylinder, it's not affecting this one. And obviously, if you get a breakdown of the fire ring, what happens is you've got combustion gases exploding in more than one cylinder at a time, and the engine's fighting itself, so the pistons are fighting itself, and you can have catastrophic failure. If you were to actually get rid of the rest of the gasket, you'd have a car that leaked, be messy, but as long as you could keep pouring in oil and water, the thing would, roughly speaking, work. So the firing is your first thing, and it's the most critical. What you're really looking for here is strength. You want something that will not compress, so that when the head and the block are clamped down, and this is clamped in between there, you will not get any combustion gases. So they, uh, the, these gaskets went, or gaskets in general, went to steel firings in the early 70s with the introduction of so-called lean burn engines, uh, where copper firings were got rid of because really they had there were failures um, which occurred, which were of course generally pretty catastrophic. You can have a failure anywhere else on the gasket, and you've got warning. Uh, so, you know, you'll have things like overheating and smoke coming out the back, but you won't necessarily do damage to your engine unless you carry on driving it, of course. So, but if you get a failure with, uh, with the firings, it's instant. The engine will stop running. You can have things like connecting rods sticking out the side of the engine, you know, at the worst. So it really is, this is what really matters. The second thing we're going to look at here is the backbone. Now, there's a steel plate that runs through this gasket as it runs through this. Uh, it's not just a plate, uh, but it's designed to give strength, and it's the composite material is, is bonded either side to that. Now, it's not actually a flat plate, it's more of a mesh. And the reason for that is it's called, it's tanged. What they call, is a, they call it a tanged backbone. And the point is that as a mesh, when the composite material or the body of the gasket is compressed down onto the backbone of the gasket, then parts of the metal, back, of metal backbone actually engage with the body of the gasket, and that prevents lateral movement of, uh, and separation of the body from the backbone, uh, and just provides general strength throughout. Now, when we made ours, you'll see, if I, if I hold these up, you'll see a bit of a difference. We've upgraded the backbone. You can see that ours is a lot stronger. Uh, it's basically a simple upgrade. Most modern gaskets will use a stronger mesh, particularly at high end. So you can see the difference there, it's pretty obvious. This one's a lot floppier. Not a critical feature, but you know, it's one of those things that you should really go for if you're, if you're making a gasket like this. So the backbone's quite important. Next thing, and really this is the one that I think you really got to know about when you're comparing this gasket to this one. We're going to talk about the body here. And the first thing you need to understand is that this was designed for brand new engines. So what's the difference between a brand new engine and an old one that's done a lot of miles? Well, basically, here we have a brand new cylinder head and a brand new crankcase, what you've got here is you've got two faces which are pretty much exactly parallel. So when a gasket goes in between them, it doesn't have to do a lot of work because you've got even forces coming down onto the gasket. As things get, as, as engines get older, that parallelism starts to uh, be lost. And while you can skim a cylinder head, standard practice, 
you can't do anything with this. Now why does that matter? Well it's all to do with the casting process. All castings have minute flaws in them, it's to do with the way the metal flows when the casting is being poured. And what happens is over time the engine's being heated and cooled and heated and cooled and eventually you'll get a very minute twist in the crankcase. So what does that mean? That means that these two faces are no longer parallel. And it particularly affects some of the later turbo engines. Uh, they, uh, because they get a lot of uh, heat through them. Uh, so we're talking in the mid 90s and so on. They were starting to get quite powerful engines. The red labels are very powerful. Uh, the Anage red label, I should say, very powerful engine. So all of those kinds of features relating to heat become a bit more prevalent then. It also is affecting some of the earlier models now. We're talking the S2 and S3, early Silver Shadow and T1, Silver Cloud 2 and Silver Cloud 3, I should, I should mention. And the reason for that is just simply age. This is something that happens over time, and these are pretty old engines. So what we're going to need to do is look at what happens with this gasket and why this body is important. Now, this was designed for new engines, and this material here was basically stays stable. It doesn't compress, it doesn't rebound. The engine, the, the head and the crankcase clamp right down on it, and because they're brand new or, or, or good, we hope, then you get good sealing across the face of the gasket. Now, this is a bit different. This body uh, material has got rebound in it. And so that means that it's when it compresses, when the engine gets hot and clamps down on it, then this will compress, but then when the engine cools, it will rebound. So it rebounds to almost its original thickness. And what that means is that it's able to take up a lot more of these inconsistencies and parallelism between these two faces. So it's designed for the aftermarket. The fourth feature is this sack tracking, and there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about that. Uh, but broadly speaking, this does two important things. It's really an initial seal. And I don't know if ever you, any, one, any of you has, has taken apart an engine or seen an engine that's come apart where there's not been a gasket failure, but you're replacing the gaskets of the engines being rebuilt. You'll often see that this has faded. This is now perfectly flat. There's no raised bit, whereas you can actually feel that this is actually a proper bead and does have a, a degree of, of uh, height to it. So, but it's obviously not critical because when the engine's been used for a long time, this has gone completely flat, just heated up and been compressed and gone as flat as a pancake. So it doesn't really do a lot, except at first, where it really does have a, an effect on initial startup and initial clamping of the gasket once it's just been fitted brand new. So there's two features uh, that this has, or two uh, essential properties. The first is that it spreads the load of the, end of the cylinder head as it's being clamped down onto it. So instead of just being compressed where the stud holes are, uh, it will actually spread the load further across the face of the gasket. And you've got to remember these are engines that are completely cold and as they heat up they expand and you get more clamping. So this is like an initial seal which is just there to spread the way that that clamping force is being applied to the gasket. The second is before the gasket's bedded in, these, this will prevent coolant from just spreading across the gasket. So it's just an initial seal. So these are the coolant holes here you can see that are surrounded with the red beading. So you'll get that process of spreading the load, but you'll also get some nice uh, initial sealing. But that is something that pretty much once the engines, once this gasket's in and bedded in, you will, you know, you won't really need that as a, that seal. It's not a critical feature. All right, so now I'm going to get into a little bit more about how the head gasket actually, the gasket actually works. Now that's something that sounds really simple, but there's a bit more to it. 
And the first thing that you really need to understand is that in this original gasket, there's what's called a delta between the firing and the body of the gasket. Now, delta just basically means a difference in height or thickness or measurement. This is nine thousandths of an inch taller than this. So given that these are clamping together and this doesn't compress, you might wonder how this seals, because this is nine thousandths of an inch thicker than this. Nine thousandths of an inch, just to give you a clue, it's a little bit under half a mil, which is, you can see obviously, and water can get through that, so how does it work? Well, the critical thing is that the engine, first of all, compresses down hard on these fire rings. And you can see this. This is a, uh, a, some lab film that we use to measure pressures on the gasket. This is the original gasket. Now you can actually see where the pressure's falling. So you've got plenty on the fire rings. Uh, you can also see the silicon beading, but not a lot on the body of the gasket. So how's that working? Well, there's a couple of things you've got to remember. One of them is that there's a difference in, co in the coefficient of expansion between the stud and the aluminium cylinder head, cylinder head and crankcase. Broadly speaking, what that means is as these both get hot, as they do, the aluminium expands more than the stud. The stud's holding the cylinder head down, so effectively as the cylinder head and the crankcase expand, they crush onto the gasket. So that's exactly what matters. Uh, and the other thing that you also need to know, which is important, is that the cylinder head and even the crankcase to a much smaller extent actually deform as the nuts are tightened down. So that instead of a perfectly flat face, you'll actually see this will actually deform slightly where the pressure is. And that, going back to the construction of the gasket, is why this silicon beading is important, because that's what's spreading that load further across the face of the gasket. So in summary, as the engine heats up, the crankcase and cylinder head both expand and clamp down onto the gasket. Now you'll remember that I was talking about the body of the gasket and the difference between the original Bentley version and our version. So the difference is that this doesn't really compress. The engine compresses down onto that. This is a little bit different. First of all, the delta between cylinder head firing and the body of the gasket is a lot less. It's in the one and two thousandths of an inch. So that you've got a lot less gap for this to, to take up as it's clamped down. That's the first thing. The second thing that's important is that when the, when the engine heats up, this will get crushed. This will crush down and compress. So any small deviations in the surface of the crankcase, uh, that whether it's completely parallel, this is a lot more forgiving. This is, going to this is going to crush. And then when the engine cools down, it's also going to rebound. So you don't have these issues with gaps being opened up between the cylinder head and the crankcase that you would with this. Now this isn't to criticise this because this was really designed for brand new engines coming off the production line. This is designed for an aftermarket engine where some of those issues with gaps can be a bit more pronounced. So that's the critical thing. Clamps down on here. This is absolutely critical. You must have good clamping force. Uh, you can actually see, I can show you the difference between, this is the original Bentley gasket. We've got some pressure sensitive film. You can actually tell exactly what the pressures are. And that's the, that's the genuine one. You can see that there's a lot of white. And if we, if we were to show you our one, you can see the difference. Here, there's a lot more contact in the face. And you can actually see the deformation of the cylinder head, which is a brand new head on a brand new crankcase. You can actually see that being picked up. So it's pretty obvious what's happening with that. You can even see our logo and the, and the, uh, the, the impression of the top that's there on the gasket. So you can actually see that good contact is being made. So that's how the gasket works. And that gives you a pretty good clue as to why our one is, is an upgrade on the original.